Hello, hello again, everyone. Um, welcome to the second round of uh, cooling research. This time it's on cold water immersion, post-exercise cold water immersion and how it might enhance or adapt patients to exercise. So, gentle reminder, this is different from um, cold water immersion for pre-cooling, which I talked about in the morning. And this is different from um, cold water immersion for the treatment of exertional heat stroke, which, um, yeah, Douglas uh, Kassar covered. So this is completely different. This is recovery cold water immersion. You do it after exercise, but I'm not talking about the recovery effects of this modality. I'm talking about how this modality might influence your adaptations, okay? So recovery cold water immersion is one of the most researched recovery uh, modality. So the first publication on recovery CWI came out in 2004, and this is the study by Lane and Menga. Since then, we've had a steady increase in the amount of research in this area. So we now have more than 190 publications on recovery cold water immersion, and more than 35 of them have been in uh, this year and last year. It's growing. So a lot of these publications are on performance and or dedicated towards understanding the mechanisms of cold water immersion, which we have reviewed quite recently. We are only aware of less than 10 publications investigating the effect of recovery cold water immersion on adaptation to exercise. And so how prevalent is cold water immersion in athletics? So we've got photographic evidence of top athletes doing this recovery modality. And then we have this study here that looked at uh, planned recovery strategies in athletes who competed in the 2015 IAAF World Championships. Okay, so we can see here that cold water immersion is quite popular. It's fourth on the list behind all the classic ones. So it's behind um, active recovery, stretching, and massage. So these have been there forever, right? So the next on the list, on the popularity list, is actually cold water immersion. So I'm unfortunately, I'm not sure how cold water immersion is used in training within track and field, okay? So, but based on this data here, I think it's quite popular as well okay, in training. So is it an appropriate pro step training recovery for all? So Marco was saying yesterday, athletics is not one sport, okay? But we're using one recovery. We're using this across all the sports. Okay, so regardless who you are, okay? You might be a thrower, you might be a jumper, you might be a middle distance runner. It's not one sport, but all track and field athletes would do, would perform endurance or resistance based training. So it's definitely either one. And some, more than some of them, it's both. Okay, so we're gonna cover how cold water immersion might influence your adaptations to these type of exercises and training. Okay, so we will cover Endurance training first. So endurance training, one of the hallmark adaptations you get from endurance training is the increase in mitochondrial content. Okay, so that's termed mitochondrial biogenesis, which refers to the increase in various mitochondrial proteins like your respiratory chain complexes, uncoupling proteins, enzymes involved in fat oxidation and the Krebs cycle. Okay. So the mitochondrion has more than one thousand protein subunits, but only 5% of them are actually manufactured, coded, and manufactured into the mitochondria. 95% of them are actually coded in the nucleus, and then they get translated, they become proteins in the cytosol outside the cell, and then they get transported into the mitochondria and assembled there, okay? So this protein here, PGC1-alpha, has been identified as the major regulator of mitochondrial biogenesis. So once it's activated, translocates into the mitochondria, it translocates into the nucleus, it forms a complex with other proteins in your DNA strand, and there it regulates the transcription of various mitochondrial genes. So these are some pathways that activate PGC1-alpha. They are all super exercise responsive. So since PGC1 is quite central to mitochondrial adaptations, we looked at how cold water immersion might influence um, the expression of PGC1. So in this study here, we exercise subjects to exhaustion. So after the exercise, they performed a one-legged cold water immersion 
for 15 minutes and you took muscle biopsies, a pre and post cold water immersion, various time points. And what we found was that cold water immersion increased the gene expression of PGC1 alpha. It almost, in, almost increased the expression of VEGF. So VEGF is the vascular endothelial growth factor is the major protein regulating vascular adaptations to exercise, okay? So our findings here were supported by another study um, by colleagues uh, from Liverpool John Moss. So they did one hour of exercise, performed cold water immersion, took muscle biopsies, and they found that post-exercise cold water immersion enhanced the expression of PGC1 alpha also exp uh, enhance the expression of VEGF. So their increase in VEGF was clear. What they also found was that cold water immersion independent of exercise, so without exercise. So just going to a bath and you sit there for 10 minutes. So that increased PGC1 alpha and VEGF as well, okay? So these are acute studies looking at gene expression. It's just a snapshot of what could happen if we continued uh, cold water immersion on a regular basis. So we did a training study, okay? So we, we trained for four weeks, we trained people for four weeks. They did long, moderate, short intervals. After each training session, they performed cold water immersion, same protocol, 15 minutes at 10 degrees. And we found um, increased activation of P38, AMPK and other markers related to AMPK. So recall guys, okay, so these are proteins upstream of PGC1 alpha. These guys activate PGC1 alpha and they're all upregulated by cold water immersion. We saw an increase in PGC1. We also saw an increase in other mitochondrial proteins. So these proteins are downstream of PGC1. Okay, so PGC1 gets activated and then it will regulate the expression of these proteins here. So we saw an increase in these proteins here. These are protein uh, subunits representative of your mitochondrial electron transport chain, one to five, and we saw an increase in complex one, complex three, and almost complex four. So we concluded that post-exercise cooling enhances mitochondrial biogenesis. Okay, that's our conclusion. And now, put a quick summary here, I've included two studies that showed the same thing. I wouldn't have time to talk about these studies, so they showed the same thing. They got one or few extra biomarkers, more on the mechanisms, but they had the same finding. Cold water immersion enhanced mitochondrial adaptations. We did, so we saw, we and others saw an increase in VEGF. Okay, so we did a study looking at cold water immersion and vascular adaptation. So that's coming out soon, hopefully. And we saw an increase cold water immersion enhanced vascular adaptations to exercise. There's one study that did not show no effect. It showed no effect of cold water immersion on mitochondrial adaptations. So based on these studies and the ones I presented earlier, post exercise cold water immersion enhances the signaling related to the mitochondrial biogenesis and mitochondrial biogenesis as well. But exercise performance is unclear. So some of these studies here had an exercise task. After their uh, training, they saw no improvement in exercise performance. Okay. So the molecular adaptations are there, signaling is there, but it doesn't translate into improved exercise performance. So how does cold water immersion influence adaptations to resistant exercise? Okay. So there's a really good study here, and the title tells us the whole story. Okay. So this study, they did a strength session, performed cold water immersion, similar protocol. That's, that's the protocol in the literature. Took muscle biopsies and found decreased activation of P70S6K and RPSX following cold water immersion. What is this P70S6K? These are crucial steps in the AKT mTOR pathway. The AKT mTOR pathway is the major pathway uh, regulating muscle hypertrophy. So that, that this pathway regulate, re regulates the increase in muscle mass. Okay, and these are crucial steps. And this study found a decreased activation of these proteins over here. Okay, so that's not, that's not good, okay? Part two of the study. They trained their subjects for 12 weeks, twice a week, after each training session, they performed cold water immersion. And what they found was that muscle mass, the 
increase in muscle mass was uh, attenuated in the cold water immersion group. So ACT is active recovery, which is some jogging, you know. And this was increase in muscle mass reduced in cold water immersion group. Strength measures. So we have leg press strength, knee extension strength, isometric torque, and rate of force development during this knee extension. So all of them improve with training, regardless of cold water immersion, but the increase these measures were attenuated in the cold water immersion group, okay? Another study looked at five weeks of strength training with cold water immersion, single leg protocol, and then they had uh, one RM and 12 RM testing, pre, post, and two weeks post, and they found that training increased 1RM and 12RM in, in both legs, so cool to uncool, but the increase in cold water immersion was likely attenuated. So the stats were letting them down a bit, but that's what they concluded. Cold water immersion, not great for strength adaptations. Okay. So recap, so we have looked at lab studies, lab cold water immersion studies using semi-trained or untrained participants and this is the finding from this cohort, which is increases mitochondrial related signaling, increases microvascular function, but exercise performance is not clear. Okay, so I'm going to show some evidence. Uh, okay, so for resistance training, it decreases signaling related pro uh, protein synthesis and decreases strength gains from resistance training. So I'm going to show some evidence from highly trained professional athletes undertaking long term cold water immersion. Not in athletics, though, unfortunately for other sports, but perhaps we can learn something. So this study is in elite rugby players. So they use cold water immersion regularly, three weeks preseason, and that's their training program. So they trained on day one, day two, took a break on day three, trained again day four and day five, and they did cold water immersion following each training day. So take note that it was never after a gym session water immersion it's always after a tactical training session or a conditioning session okay so the gym sessions were always you know earlier in the day and cold water immersion was done at the end of the training day and unfortunately cmj counter movement jump was the only performance measure okay so, <laughs> so basically they had wellness they had soreness which is not relevant to this but what they found was that there was a small benefit in favor of cold water immersion at the end of week one, and this is probably the acute recovery effects. But there were small benefits at the end of week two and throughout week three as well. So, no decrease in jumping performance, no decrease in power performance, and they were using cold water immersion for four times a week for three weeks. Okay. Another study, basketball players from the Spanish Premier League, and they did cold water immersion after last training session before the game, after the game, they had two games a week. So in total, they had 132 cold water immersion sessions between September and April. So that's a lot of cooling. That's a lot of cooling, and it's for a long time. And that's the cooling protocol. So pre and post, they did some neuromuscular testing. It's a heavy slide, guys. Um, they did some neuromuscular testing. And in the control group, they saw a decrease in various strength measures, okay? There was no decrease in the cold water immersion group. And these are stats which imply that these differences here are likely not by chance, okay? That's what the stats are saying. And then more strength measures at a higher velocity, again, decrease in the control group no decrease in the cold water immersion group and stats say that this is likely um, not by chance as well okay so these guys used a lot of cold water immersion four times a week for six months and did not see any decrease in strength measures okay um, i did not present this but in their program they didn't do cold water immersion after resistance training session as well okay. so they avoided that so final word
cold water immersion may be beneficial for uh, endurance adaptations is detrimental for adaptations to resistance exercise can we still gain from resistance training if we use cold water immersion if you've got a strength athlete okay who has been doing two hours of technical work in the field is it okay to do cold water immersion i say that's that's the thing so maybe so the key thing is to avoid programming this recovery modality immediately following a recent exercise so you reduce the signaling in, reduce the interference with anabolic signaling pathways so signaling guys akt mtor pathways you know you can last up four hours six hours so maybe if you avoid that time point be okay um benefit from the reco uh, benefit from the recovery effects of cold water immersion there's a lot in the literature improve training quality and that might improve adaptations for longer term so this is just my take on it okay we need more data clearly to show this thank you <laughs>